Okay, so here's a problem that you might come across in your studies of polynomials. Given that f of x equals ax cubed minus 8x squared minus 9x plus b is exactly divisible by 3x minus 2 and leaves a remainder of 6 when divided by x, find the value of a and b. Well, in reading this problem, we get a big hint from this word remainder and it suggests that we need to apply the polynomial remainder theorem. So if I was to divide a polynomial f of x by some uh, divisor p of x, I would expect to get a quotient q of x plus some remainder r of x on p of x. And uh, when it comes to the polynomial remainder theorem, you'll see this more commonly written as f of x is equal to p of x by q of x plus the remainder r of x. And uh, typically p of x is normally a linear divisor, so a polynomial of degree 1, so often it'll be in the form of x minus a, which means r of x is always going to be one degree lower. So if p of x is degree 1, r of x is degree 0, which means r of x is simply a constant, and we'll call it r. So let's break this problem down into two parts. So for the first part, f of x is exactly divisible by 3x minus 2. So for part 1, our p of x is equal to 3x minus 2. So in this case, f of x we write as 3x minus 2 by the quotient q of x plus the remainder r. And just an aside, there is never any need to find what this q of x is. Okay, so if you're going down the road of long division, in order to find what q of x is, I think you'll find that you'll be pulling your hair out. So don't go down that route, because the problem is a lot simpler than that. So let's uh, write this p of x, though, in the form of x minus a. So in order to do that, I'm going to divide this whole thing by one third, or sorry, multiply this whole thing by one third. So we have one third of f of x is equal to one third times 3x minus 2 by the q of x plus one third of the remainder r. So if we take this one third into the first set of parentheses on the right hand side we get x minus two thirds. The q of x remains as it is. We can write the remainder as r on 3. So completing it we have one third of f of x is equal to x minus 2 thirds by the q of x plus r on 3. What I'm going to do now is to let big f of x, capital F of x, is equal to 1 third of small f of x. And I'm going to let capital R equals small r on 3. So the expression becomes, it becomes more familiar. So we have capital F of x is equal to 1 third sorry, x minus two-thirds by the q of x plus r. Okay, so capital F of x being equal to one-third of f of x is equal to one-third times ax cubed minus 8x squared minus 9x plus b so if we take the one-third into the brackets here, we get ax cubed on 3 minus 8x squared on 3 minus 9x on 3 plus b on 3. 9 on 3 simply reduces to 3 of x. So we can tackle this problem now because by the polynomial remainder theorem, r is simply equal to f evaluated at x equals a. So remember how we had the form p of x is equal to x minus a. Well simply if we let x equals a, p of a is equal to 
a minus a, which equals 0. So in this case, a is equal to 2 thirds. And if we put 2 thirds here, we get 2 thirds minus 2 thirds, which equals 0. The first term actually goes to 0, and that's how r is always equal to f evaluated at x equals a. So with that, we have from here, r is equal to a on 3 by 2 thirds cubed minus 8 on 3 by 2 thirds cubed, sorry, squared, minus 3 by 2 thirds plus b on 3. Okay, let's move this note over a little bit for clarity. And because p of x equals 3x on 2 is perfectly divisible into f of x, this remainder little r is equal to 0. So if little r is equal to 0, big R, which equals little r over 3, is also equal to 0 over 3, which means big R is also equal to 0. So if we simply take this portion of the expression here, we've got a on 3 by, when we cubed 2 thirds, we get 8 on 27 minus 8 on 3. When we square 2 thirds, we get 4 on 9. 3 cancels with 3 to leave us with minus 2 plus b on 3. And don't forget, that equals 0. So, if we expand and simplify, we get 8a on 81 minus 8 fours are 32 over 27 minus 2 plus b on 3 equals 0. Now if we get ourselves a common denominator, which is actually 81, we'll have 8a minus 96 minus 192 plus 27b over 81 equals 0. Let's leave all the unknowns on one side. So we have 8a plus 27b is equal to 96 plus 192, which equals 258. Let's call this equation 1, and we'll move on to part 2 now. I'm just going to scroll back up to the problem statement because for part 2 we're left with a remainder of 6 when we divide by x. So back to the polynomial remainder theorem equation f of x equals the divisor p of x by the quotient q of x plus r. When we divide by x, the divisor p of x is simply x which I can write as x minus 0. So therefore, a equals 0, because this is in the form of x minus a. Sorry, a is equal to 0, not equal to a. Okay, so the equation is f of x is equal to x minus 0 by the q of x plus r. Okay, now, as another aside, I said before we don't need to evaluate q of x, but in this case, because we've changed the divisor, we've changed the dividing polynomial, q of x will be different and r of x will also be different. So just be aware of that. So really we, uh, we have here p sub 2 to, to denote the difference in the divisor. We have q sub 2 and we have r sub 2. So with a equals 0, and applying the polynomial remainder theorem, we get f at a equals 0 is equal to the remainder r2. And we know we're given that the uh, remainder is equal to 6. So f at 0 is equal to a times 0 cubed minus 8 times 0 squared minus 9 times 0 plus b, and that's equal to 6 which is the remainder that we're given. So the first three terms all go to zero because anything times zero equals zero. So the value of b is simply six. And let's now sub this into equation one. 
all the way up here. So from equation 1 we've got 8 times a plus 27 times 6 equals 258. So 8a is equal to 258 minus 27 by 6 is equal to 162. So a is equal to 258 minus 162 is equal to 96 divided by 8. So therefore a is equal to 12. So there you have it. To complete it we can simply write the expression that we're given f of x as 12 x cubed minus 8 x squared minus 9 x plus 6. All right, so that'll conclude this video. If you found it useful, hit that like button. Tell all your math friends and study mates to come and check out my channel. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section below. I'll do my best to help you. And until next time, best of luck with your math studies, and I'll see you on the next video.